Good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, on, on the art conversation, uh, we have someone very uh, interesting uh, directly from Mumbai. We have Shaili Satyu with, with us. Uh, Shaili is a founder and artistic director of a theater company called Gillo. So Gillo is basically a short form of Gilhari. And uh, they work extensively with children. They uh, organize different kind of uh, workshops, they direct plays, they take that place to children and their complete focus is on the uh, theater for children. So we'll be talking about that. But before that, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Shelly. Shelly has been working in, uh, in the area of uh, theater for a very long time, I think more than 20 years now. Uh, she was a part of uh, IPTA, which stands for uh, Indian People Theater Association. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, after that, uh, she started her own organization. Uh, she's, uh, for a very long time, she's also uh, associated with an uh, international organization called Asitej, which again, uh, completely focused on uh, theater for children. So we'll be talking briefly about that also. Uh, so before that, uh, Shelly, uh, the first question is, can you tell us something about your company, Gillo. So, uh, Gillo Repertory, uh, this started uh, in the end of uh, 2009 uh, in Bombay. And um, initially, we were not clear uh, how to move ahead because uh, we wanted to have a theater company which only makes plays for children. Okay. And at least in Bombay, we didn't have that kind of uh, a theater organization uh, ever before. Uh, there were a lot of groups uh, working with children, but they were either focusing on uh, doing workshops with children or working with uh, underprivileged children or adult set of groups who would produce a one play in a year or two plays uh, once in two years uh, for children. Yeah. So we were looking at how do you go about setting up uh, a new company which exclusively works in an area which hasn't been done before. So the first couple of years um, was uh, all experiment uh, in terms of how to function, how to do the training content, how to reach to an audience because there are not that many uh, ready platforms to uh, take your work. Uh, so it's been uh, now 10 years uh, of uh, making uh, plays for children. About 80% of our work is performing for children and 20% of work is uh, doing workshops for children, teachers, parents. Um, now, uh, over the last 10 years. Okay. Uh, so managing a, a theater company is a big thing, as we all know. And there are people who are, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, doing some work in bits and pieces for children at different parts of Maharashtra. So I guess you were a part of Junoon also, and you have uh, traveled at different parts of India you have seen the kind of work people are doing. Uh, so what, what do you think, what efforts need to be made when someone wants to work towards theater for children? Uh, do you mean like uh, what people should do individually or what is the need of the R in terms of a sector? Uh, no, uh, first what they need to do individually, because if I'm working with some small village, you know, I have mm -hmm. schools around, I have few uh, parents who would be interested. So how should I reach out to them? How should I create the need for theater for children? So firstly, um, I would say that um, the work needs to start not only at an individual level, but also at a collective level uh, from um, various organizations who are already working in the space of the arts and theater for children in India. Uh, because uh, we don't have uh, formal training in theater for children. Yeah. Um, uh, people like me who are working in the field, we don't have formal training. There are some people who've got training in UK or France, um, overseas, uh, and then they are now working in India. But in India, other than uh, the one course at the NSD's uh, theater, uh, yeah. TIE uh, course in Agartala, uh, there is no other course uh, in all of India on theater for children. Yeah. So um, in this kind of space, the whole thing is very organic. Mostly people are self-taught um, or you are apprenticing with somebody. 
so i would say for people who are getting into the field um one is to um work with children uh you know school or an ngo where you can volunteer uh, because um, like how we read books you know uh, you have to also yeah. read people and understand uh, children from your own experience uh you can read uh, a lot about child development and child psychology and um, all of that but um, there's also the real human interaction and observations which are needed so one i would say is increase your understanding and your rapport and your knowledge of children of different age group of different background uh, economic cultural geographical language um so just expose yourself to more and more uh, you know um ways in which children are learning their uh, different environments that they are part of uh, how do they engage in those environments uh the second i would say is um connect with and uh, increase your own uh, sort of exposure to children's literature because that is something which is uh, quite uh, evolved uh, in india in many languages mm -hmm. um and um lot more than what we had access to when we were children so i think uh, a lot of uh, young artists uh, can benefit from um, being more connected with literature for children or cinema for children and also some of the animation not all of it um but what i'm trying to say is that uh, build your awareness to uh, what are the different stimulus today are receiving and i know in a big country like india the uh, difference between children uh, across economic backgrounds is vast uh, still um, we can um, uh, you know learn something um, of what at least some children are receiving um also it helps to uh, read uh, even uh, school textbooks to know what kind of content is there in the textbooks like a literature textbook or a yeah. history or geography because you know uh, you know uh, how what is the input that children are getting to make sense of the world around them so that would be one more thing that i would suggest to people watching um, other people's plays or assisting somebody in a workshop that is also helpful in a apprentice kind of uh, format um and because a lot of theater people don't watch each other's work in our country um and i feel that is is uh, slightly problematic and i yeah. think watching uh, you know people's work is very very essential not only to know what you want to do but what you don't want to do uh, and also understanding uh, audience responses you may agree with the responses you may not agree uh, it's not about pandering to the audience or playing to the gallery as we say but you may say that oh in, you know in this kind of situation in a play children were laughing and that's not a that's not a positive or constructive reaction and is showing that they are apathetic uh, for instance some violence or death or something negative on stage and <coughs> it does um, sometimes happen and you feel uh, why are children responding in this very insensitive manner and you know you want to do something where you you can um provoke them to respond in a more uh, responsible manner right or think about their re reaction so there are different different things which you can gain from uh, watching the performers as well as watching the audience uh so i just wanted to go to the benefits for children but before that something uh, caught my mind that uh you have talked a lot about what the individual need to uh, do but uh, as far as uh, a government is concerned we don't have art and entertainment on priority mm -hmm. right uh, so when you see a lot of other countries where uh, theater for children or some kind of uh, element of art for children is somewhere in the curriculum or it's a, it's a part of uh, society it's a part of their upbringing so if you go to uh, uk there are few uh, national theaters where children below the age of 12 can enter completely for free so they can see of course they need to book in advance but there are few seats which are completely reserved for children so they they can come and see the plays so what what do you think a government should uh, what kind of steps they should take 
to make it a integral part of our uh, learning integral part mm-hmm. of education you know because this is the age so uh, if you treat uh, provide this for the age group of uh, 6 to 12 you know that is something they will going to develop build their understanding uh, develop their uh, interest in the area of arts so yeah. i don't know whether this will happen or not but at least um, there is no harm uh, in discussing you know what do you think about it so i feel firstly a comparison with a country like uk or even for that matter germany or korea or france uh, where um, uh, the arts um, uh, the institutionalization of the arts and the funding from uh, government or even a country like norway yeah um their arts in education programs are very very strong and the amount of funding in terms of even percentage of gdp if you look at in, into the cultural sector into the education sector is much higher than india yeah uh, so we india is like many countries you know each state can be like one country because our population is so high so i think those comparisons are a bit unfair mm-hmm. what i would say is that the government uh, right now uh, in pockets is looking at uh, you know uh, using theater uh, in the classroom in some states okay um i know there are efforts in delhi under the uh, kejriwal government there have been efforts in karnataka there have been efforts uh, in kerala um over the years there have been some efforts even in gujarat um looking at uh, using theater to teach life skills mm. so uh, there have been different efforts but they haven't really become fully part and parcel of the system right also coming back to the training aspect um for instance now uh, the um, uh, cbse has a um, drama curriculum where drama is a subject uh, in schools it's not compulsory but yeah. in india we have a we have a syllabus which is uh, given in detail for an entire uh, school uh, year from grade 1 to grade i think it's till 12 even ncert so, uh, ncert has made that and then cbse has adopted it yeah uh, now um, who is going to deliver this program along with this there is no program for training the drama teachers so you have a syllabus which for which you haven't trained teachers correct uh so it's a catch 22 situation and um you know anybody and everybody who does theater is being called upon to become a drama teacher in a school some people have a natural flair uh, for teaching or working with children but a lot of people don't and um a lot of people just do it for what is considered as safe money because it's yep. guaranteed if you're working in a school uh so there are a lot of compulsions but frankly speaking we don't have a training set up for creating drama teachers for schools so to expect schools to have drama as a subject uh, is then again you know uh, a difficult proposition uh, in terms of the quality in terms of the methodology in terms of uh, also like uh, localizing the content as per your state culture uh, there's so many so many aspects in that and then you have of course the state board and the international boards and the delhi board um which have their own agendas yeah so um i would say that say compared to about 10 years ago there are many more schools now who do have drama as a subject and i think that's a positive change and uh, the movement is slow um real numbers will not come through till as you said it becomes part of government schools um uh, but i think uh, there's so much else which is uh, still um you know the government schools are struggling with for whatever reason um, but the reality is that it's a big struggle so i think the arts uh, reaching to every child in the country is going to take decades right. but there are people working on it and uh, to expect that you know it will happen for everyone uh, very soon um, you know that shortcut is not going to work yeah. i think all of us have to do our bit yeah. in wherever we are working and i would actually appeal to theater groups who don't work with children theater artists who've never performed or done anything for children to set aside some amount of time and effort and fund from their annual calendar uh, to do something for children in their neighborhood in wherever they are so if you have some you know local uh, engagement 
it may not be the ideal in terms of uh, the pedagogical input they get or right. anything else but uh, there will still be some connection which will begin so that that you know it's it's going to be very organic it has been very organic right. and i think but the positive thing is that it has increased there are more and more schools who are using uh, drama techniques and tools um, without knowing that they're using drama techniques yes. that's also okay you know okay so i think you're talking about uh, creating a movement of uh, theater for children and uh, i think that's very important people working in small cities you know where they have small set of people and they do uh, some state level competition some one act play competitions so they can actually uh, jump into this area and start doing something even the smallest uh, thing like uh, if they start storytelling performances that yeah. is also fine they can they need very minimalistic uh, things just people and the story and they can go to schools and start doing it uh, apart from that they can think of doing a solo performance as well where you again need you know it's okay if you don't have lights and costumes and makeup and everything but you need to have some story to tell to children and uh, if if it started on a uh, even at a smaller scale at different locations i think that will become a movement uh yeah. so you did lot of uh, productions you do lot of uh, uh, performances and shows apart from that you also did uh, experimented a mobile theater also yeah. right so uh, how does it help children when you go to your audience you perform and you have been doing it for last 14 15 years so what do you think what is the benefit to children so i think uh, firstly um in this very uh, materialistic and capitalist society that we are uh, there's always this bottom line uh, attitude that people have and you know what is the benefit what is the benefit of anything yeah you know um, i think uh, one has to look at it uh, from you know a wider uh, sort of uh, outlook where we are looking at arts um, building something in children uh, whether you want to call it empathy sensitivity awareness but opening up ways of looking at the world around them engaging with the world around them where your communication understanding teamwork whatever whatever you know all of those skill sets that you bring in but i think the most important is to build a world view and uh, to give that um, exposure to children uh, to make their own um, uh, to make their own sense of the world so i would say that um, it would give them uh, a skill set um which would help them to engage with the world uh make better sense of it and uh, also become more constructive and you know better contributors to society in the future that's what i would say so that is something uh, when uh, children are performing on stage But what i mean to say is uh, what happens with the audience when children no, I, 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 i don't think it's only about children performing on stage i think it's it's about having both. the arts as a part of your life okay where the arts um, become a part of your life when you are um, in school and uh, when you become an adult we're not looking at every child uh, becoming an artist yes. uh, we need people in all spheres of life some children from uh, you know uh, who have been exposed to the arts in school will become artists some who've not been exposed to the arts will also become artists correct uh, but it's more about having the arts as a part of your life irrespective of what you do as an adult you may be working in a government office or you may be a sports person you may be a doctor you may be um you know um uh, teacher cleaning the roads or or um uh, you know you may be a farmer Uh, but the arts and culture have always been part of our daily lives uh, to give a sense of community to give a sense of identity uh, as a social space where people meet engage interact so i think um, if we have uh, um, arts exposure in schools where we're looking at the aesthetic development of children as one of the areas of development uh, as part of human development then um, i would say you know like we say sports 
is an important part of 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 growing up right uh, but we're not looking at everybody becoming a sports person but there is a certain uh, approach to life that uh, or approach to um self care which comes through if you take up sports and it stays with you all your life mm. uh, you become you know you watch sports as an adult the audience for for uh, the sports is created you appreciate um, you learn to appreciate yeah you learn to appreciate you learn to uh, do things other than running after money uh, you learn to do other things with people that uh, you love and care about and i think that social aspect of of where the arts come in is also coming through now uh, in in this lockdown period we're looking at how um it's it's you know people watching videos they uh, especially with children those who have access uh, they are you know reading books online it's not like they don't have videos to watch or they cannot watch tv but there is a certain aspect of uh, knowing that you know there's somebody on the other side who's talking to you like we are talking on video yeah. chat um so i think uh, that need for human interaction even if it if it uh, over the net is still an important uh, you know fundamental need of people and Very true. Um, yeah uh, i think this this lockdown period uh, Uh, gave people that insight how art is important because i know many people you know sitting at home and they started searching uh, you know uh, i left painting uh, long back so they started painting they started poetry uh, they started reading once again uh, they started playing some musical instruments which they have learned in a <laughs> school time so uh, when so you realize the 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 power of it when you are completely locked down at home and you have nothing else to do so i think that's that's very important point you have uh, said to make it a part of life and not just part of education but yes of course through education it can become a part of life so lastly uh, uh, shelly you were a part of uh, asitage india for a very long time so just want to explore uh, for our audience what exactly asitage is uh what they do and uh, what is their scope of work so asitage uh, is an international uh, body uh, of theater artists theater companies theater institutions that are focused on theater for children and young people which means uh, people between the age of 0 and 18 years um it, it's uh, i think present in about 95 countries uh, with different chapters in each country uh the india chapter has been around for more than a decade uh i'm still a member of asitej but i'm not part of the managing committee right now um it's basically a network body of um, people who are interested in uh promoting the cause of theater among children um exchanging between artists in terms of uh, work practice uh, content approach um uh, also a training exchange programs residencies so these are the kind of like exchanges which artists do between uh, companies within the country or with artists from overseas yes. so there's a lot of collaboration uh, through the asitej network there are festivals uh, theater festivals hosted um, by asitej members in different parts of the whole world and uh, there's a large network of festivals which people can attend and uh, there are school children who attend these festivals as audience um and um, uh, you understand that uh, uh, it's a very wide community it's a large community of uh, artists and educators who are working in the space of theater for children and young people and um, you're part of a much much bigger uh, you could call it a movement or a you know entire area of work okay so thank you very much uh, for letting us know uh, so this we we know each other for a very long time but for the matter of fact we are talking about theater for a very first time and i think <laughs> thanks to this uh, corona lockdown time who actually gave us the opportunity to you know create this kind of uh, knowledge exchange so we have been talking to uh, many people in india and abroad also and uh, what i feel that this kind of uh, dialogue uh, need to be continued in future so uh, on that note we'll stop here and thank you very much for your time uh, stay safe thank you and 
just don't roam around. Thank you.